transgressions from us. Your sins, then, are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Spirit of power and light, unify my family and my family of faith in focusing on Jesus, my Lord and Savior. As I rest in his saving grace, lead me to follow the path of his gracious life. As I fix my eyes on him, fill my life with the Father's incredible and abundant blessings. Through Jesus Christ, my Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Father, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our gospel lesson this day comes from John chapter 6. Uh, 
there were many people who were turning away from Jesus at this time. And he asked his disciples, are you going to go too? And Peter uh, responds with a heart full of faith. No, we're going to stay focused on you in the, in the, in the familiar words. Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life and the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they're full of the Spirit and life. And yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. But he went on to say, And this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. From this time, Many of the disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You don't want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve, and Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise and thanks to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you to be seated for the children's lesson. So today we're thinking about focus a little bit, right? Um, what kind of tools do we use to help us focus? Well, if something's really far away, we might use a pair of <coughs> binoculars. And you and I know they got all these little dials on, and, right? And so it can be blurry, but depending on your vision, I wear glasses, so they always have to be adjusted for me. Uh, but you could bring into focus something that's far, far away, something you really want to be intent on. On the other hand, when things are really, really close and you need to focus, you can use a magnifying glass. There are all kinds of aids to help us focus on what matters to us. And Jesus has given much the same thing, and the writer of the Hebrews says, uh, Let's throw away everything that gets in the way of our relationship with Jesus. And uh, we're going to use the word distractions, things that distract us from the love and light that he's given to us. And what does he use to focus our hearts on him? Well, things like reading the Bible and listening to his word. Things like praying where our hearts are especially directed and focused on him. And today we just want to be encouragers of each other as we run our race that we keep our focus on the long-term goal and also on the minute every hour, every minute, every second of our lives to keep our eyes on Jesus. Let's pray and ask him to help us with that. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus. thank you for keeping your focus. Thank you for keeping your focus. As you ran your race. As you ran your race. And went to the cross. And to the empty tomb. And to the empty tomb. All for me. All for me. Help me to be focused. In my race with you. In my race with you. Bring me blessing. Bring me blessing. Keep me strong. Keep me strong. Help me finish well. In your name. Amen. Amen. Sing the hymn of the day.
gracious are yours from God our Father and from our dear Lord and our Savior Jesus. Amen. Our text today is uh, especially the lesson from the Hebrews. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And this is all about focus. And you and I know that so often in life, focus is incredibly important. We're just finishing up the uh, baseball season now, and yes, the Brewers are out. But one of the things you tell a ball player to do it is, is to keep his eye on the ball, right? And if you're a golfer, you do the same thing, you know? You can't look where it's going. You've got to look at it. When you're going to strike it, you've got to keep your focus. So often when people are running the race, they keep their eye on the prize, and the prize is what comes when they cross the finish line. The last of the three major horse races just happened, right? And the, uh, and the horses are straining to get across that finish run line. Uh, hopefully some Olympics will happen at some time in our future again when we get beyond this COVID stuff, and, and we'll see racers doing the same, and we know that sometimes the worst thing you can do, we see it in football all the time, right? A guy gets out in front, and what does he do? Instead of looking toward the goal, he does this. And often slows him down just that half a step that allows a defender to come up and, and catch him. Uh, and, and so often coaches will say, you know, when you're out in front like that, you just got to run for the goal line. Don't worry about who's right behind you. Focus is incredibly important, and it's something that uh, parents do with their kids, right? I'm watching you. And sometimes uh, kids don't want that focus. I always say it's tough to be a, an only child, <laughs> right? Because your parents have all their focus on you. There's nobody to divert it, no brothers or sisters that can take it away. It's one of the advantages of being in a family with siblings is that you've got somebody who diverts your parents' focus a little bit. Um, but yeah, focus is incredibly important as we parent and as we're in relationships. And, and certainly in order to focus, we've often got to have some needs, some things that help us as we make our journey through life. Uh, God calls us to be a family on mission, to run the race that he's given us with um, a determined focus, both in our individual families and also as a faith family. And if we listen to the words of our text, we hear that that focus means we're not distracted by things uh, that are calling for our attention, that either don't deserve our attention or maybe deserve our attention, but in the right priority. And instead, we're called to persevere, to be very determined in our running of the race that, that God has set us on through faith. So let's read through the text together. And I'd like you to notice I've separated it out into an A and a B. The A part is about not being distracted, and the B part is about being determined. So let's read it that way today. Would you read it with me? Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our day. He is the pioneer and perfecter. You know, sometimes when, especially uh, you think of, of something like bicycle races or foot races, what do people do? Well, they'll sometimes let somebody get ahead of them so that that person is breaking the wind as they're moving ahead and having to work harder than they have to if they're drafting, if they're right behind them, running pace for pace. In other words, they keep their eyes on the one who is ahead. And you and I are encouraged in this text to be reminded that Jesus was somebody who ran his race like that. He wasn't distracted, but he was determined. And, and our text says it in this way. Would you read it with me? 
For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. For the joy set before him, what was that joy? It was seeing you and me once again in a loving and faithful relationship with his heavenly father. That was the joy. That's what was in his focus as he went to the cross. It's why he could say to his father, not what I will, but what you do. When he is in the garden and looking toward that time on the cross, he endured the cross, he scorning and shame. And we see that kind of joy even as he's on the cross. Uh, it always marvels uh, me when I have an opportunity to teach through the seven words of Jesus how often he focuses on others, right? The first word, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Who is he focused on? The very people who put him on the cross. Today you'll be with me in paradise. It's that spoken for the sake of, not for his, but for the sake of the thief who is alongside him. Mother, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. Even while he's dying on the cross, he's looking out for his mom. And it, 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 it is incredible that somebody going through the pain that he was going through kept his focus on the, the needs of others. It's only after that that he then begins to cry, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I thirst. It is finished. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Jesus was focused even as he was on the cross for those that he loved. And he didn't grow weary. And he didn't lose heart. Victor Frankl, who wrote a book called In Search of Meaning, uh, was a fellow who endured the, the torture of uh, of a Jewish concentration camp. And, he's, and, and in his book, one of the things he said is that when people really lost it in the concentration camps, when they lost their sense of purpose or why. And he says this, that man can en endure any what as long as he has a good enough why. Jesus had a good enough why to endure what he did for you and for me on the cross, who for us and for our salvation, we say in the creed, endured the cross, yes, for you and me. And it's that focus that God had had on his people, that focus of his love and his mercy and his grace that pervaded the saints of the past, and that's where the writer to the Hebrews had been. And so he talks about those amazing heroes from the past. And you and I know they weren't perfect people because their sins are there on every page for us to see as well. But what they did is they had a faith in God, a God who loves, a God who forgives, a God that they could trust that helped them see the end. And so we, we have him say by faith, you know, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance obeyed and went. Um, by faith Noah, when he was warned about things not yet seen, he hadn't seen it drop of rain yet, yet in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By faith Moses called it that burning bush, with nothing but the staff in his hand, went before Pharaoh and called for the release of his people. By faith, children were brought back to life by people like Elijah and Elisha in the Old Testament and given back to their mothers by faith. And the writer of the Hebrews ends it this way. He says, by faith, um, oops, there it is. One more shot. I don't have time to tell about Gideon or Barak or Samson or Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of the lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle, routed foreign 
armies, women received back their dead who were raised to life again. Now he's just recounted in a rather long chapter, it's well worth reviewing, all of these saints who have gone before us, who weren't perfect as we are not, as we've admitted once again today, but who had faith, who were focused and were not distracted. And, and it's, it's after this chapter then that he says, as he begins in chapter 12, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. And the picture that he's drawing is that you and I are on the field of competition, and all these saints are sitting in the stands. Unfortunately, we're not seeing this picture much these days, right? Stands that are full. But that's the picture the writer of the Hebrews draws for us. And, and they've already completed their race, and they're sitting in the stands, uh, and they're waiting for us to come home. And they're cheering us on. By the way, this is one of those passages that might indicate that people in heaven are able to see what we're doing here on earth. Sometimes people ask me that question. I say, well, here's a place that would indicate that if they're cheering us on, if they're seeing us on the field of competition, then they're a part of that great cloud of witnesses who are standing in the halls of heaven watching us and cheering us on so that we make it safely home. And we're encouraged then to stay focused and not be distracted. What kind of things distract us? Well, stuff that burdens us. You know, people talk about their baggage, whether it's their spiritual baggage, their psychological baggage, their physical baggage. It's the challenges that you and I carry in life. And when people make it to the stand, you know, they're, they're, they're often wearing their warm-ups. But the reason why they're called warm-ups, because they're discarded at the beginning of the race. Because none of them could run as fast or as focused if they had to be running in those warm-ups with the, those cl clothes flapping around them. It's why when you teach somebody how to save themselves, if they happen to fall into a place that, uh, a water that uh, doesn't have an easy access out, you get rid of the clothes that would weigh you down so that you can't swim. And one of the things you teach somebody to do, I've taught this in water safety instructor class, that you use your pants to make a float. There's a way to do it. And, and, and assist you in your, your journey. You get rid of everything that entangles. And for you and for me, the scriptures describe those things that entangle as things like the devil, who's always giving us false promises. You know, that's his modus operandi already from the beginning in the Garden of Eden. He gives them a false promise, Adam and Eve. You'll not die. No, instead your eyes are going to be open like God. No, you're going to be better off if you don't listen to God. And there are all kinds of people in this world who are mouthpieces for those kinds of temptations that come from the devil. That somehow living in a different way that God calls us to is going to be better for us, going to be more enjoyable for us, going to be more of a blessing. The devil always has those false promises. Other distractions come from the world. And they come in a couple of ways. First of all, there's the distractions that come from the physical things around us. You ever do any daydreaming? Something else got your attention? During the sermon even? Right? Well, what happens when you daydream is you've lost your focus. Right? Something else has gotten your attention. And you and I know that there's lots of voices clamoring for our attention. Right now it's political ads. And when the political ads aren't, it's just plain ads. Who are constantly telling us what product we have to have in order to really be successful, filled with joy. And we're constantly being distracted by the things that are around us. And we're also distracted by people who are waving other options in front of us, inviting us to other ways that are outside of 
God's will can win. The other people in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods, in our world. And then, of course, there's the distraction, the baggage that comes from our own sinful hearts, as I said. Those saints that he's talking about in chapter 11, we could go into all of their stories and we can find sin in every single one. They were not perfect people and neither are we. And part of the problem is this inbred sinful desire that lives sometimes in our hearts, summed up classically in the seven deadly sins. You see, these things don't come from outside of us. They come from inside of us. Things like lust and gluttony and greed and sloth and wrath and envy and pride. That's not what other people do to us. It's what wells up in our hearts in times of weakness, distracting us from keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. What's the antidote? Well, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. And, and how do you do that? Well, you rely on God's power each and every day, and you rely on his resources like the scriptures, the supper, the baptismal promise you received when he put his name on you to carry with you the rest of your life. You rely on the resources of the fact that he put his spirit in you. Because no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Don't you know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? And he wants you to pay attention to the Spirit's voice as you make your journey through life. And how do you do that? Well, you do that as you as you develop practices that help you stay focused. Things like praying in the morning when you get up, praying at meals, remembering every day. It doesn't have to be a long prayer. It's just a, a prayer that says, Jesus, Father, Spirit, thank you for these gifts you placed in my life. You pray at night asking for forgiveness, knowing that once he's taken your sin and can't ever touch you again and you can sleep peacefully at night, you, you focus on Jesus when you take time to listen to his word. And it doesn't take very long, a few minutes every day. One of the things that I do every day, I play some mind games first thing in the morning, wake up my brain. And, and, and then I, I have my Bible app, and every day I get a prayer, I, I, I get a verse of the day. And, and it gives me an opportunity just here, in a very short period of time, a simple word for God for that day. And it's amazing how often that word lines up with something that's maybe going on that day. And it gives me a way to pray back to, 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 to my Heavenly Father the words that He's placed on the pages of Holy Scripture. And it, it, it takes less than five minutes to do that. And, and when I do that, then I have a better focus for the rest of my days. I go about my daily tasks and and I encourage you to do that personally. And one of the, the, the joys and privileges that we have here as a family of faith is to keep our eyes focused on Jesus collectively. And it's real easy to be distracted about other things, you know. And that's especially uh, true sometimes when, when you feel a little threatened, then the survival mode kicks in and, and it's hard to stay focused on mission because you just staying alive. Well, we're going to do more than stay alive as brothers and sisters in Christ. We're, we're going to live. In the power and promise of Jesus, we're going to step out in faith and, and, uh, and love and serve the world that God has placed us in his, in his name. As we're doing with things like quilts or the mites on L.W. Nelson, Sunday, as we're doing in our school and child care ministry, as we're doing in our, our Bible studies and our our food in gatherings and sharing. So all of those things you see are about staying focused on the life and love that God has given us. And as we do that, we're reminded that, that the race here is not a sprint. It's a marathon. And, you know, one of the things that we have to remember is that we have to train for endurance, not speed. I had an interesting experience when I was a young man. I was in college and I worked in a, in a foundry. And I worked in the maintenance 
department and sometimes the, the, the long-termers, the guys who were there all the time, they'd say, Dan, slow down a little bit. He said, you're only here for a couple of months. We're here all year round. And, and you can't keep that pace all year round. You need to slow down a little bit. It, it's a reminder that slow and steady wins the race, right, as the old saying goes. When you're in a marathon, it's about being steady and about being focused. And we know that's true in a lot of other areas of life. Uh, in standardized math tests, for instance, Japanese children consistently score higher than their American counterparts. And while some assume that a natural proclivity toward mathematics is a part of their culture and the primary difference, researchers discovered that it may have more to do with effort than ability. In one study involving first graders, students were given a difficult puzzle to solve, and the researchers weren't interested in whether or not the children could solve the puzzle. They simply wanted to know how long would they try before giving up. The American children lasted on, on average 9.47 minutes. It's about nine and a half minutes. The, the Japanese children lasted 13.93 minutes, almost 14. In other words, the Japanese children tried 47% longer than the American children to solve the problem. Is it any wonder that they score a little higher on their math exams? Researchers concluded that the difference in math scores might have less to do with the intelligence quotient than it had to do with the persistence quotient. The Japanese first graders simply tried harder and longer. And you know there are no shortcuts to a life of Jesus. And sometimes life gets a little puzzling along the way. Sometimes we look up to heaven and say, why God? And the answer to that question is always found when we look up to the cross. When we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. And we know that whatever answer God gives us is done in love. Because where we find the evidence of his love is not in what's around us, but on that cross. What he's done for us. That Jesus, who was focused and determined, and he ran his race with joy, calls us to run our race with joy together. Or to visit a theme we'll hear in a couple of weeks with the LWML. To serve the Lord together with gladness. Focused as we consider him who endured the cross, scorning its shame for the joy set before him. One last encouragement in a way to stay focused. I, I, I found this one and just found it interesting. What if we began to treat our Bibles the way we treat our cell phones? What if we carried it with us everywhere? I do because I have my Bible app on my cell phone. What if we turn back to get it if we forgot it, like we often do for our cell phones? What if? We checked it out for messages throughout the day. Just think about how much screen time you spend. You know, do you get that report every week? I do. How much screen time do we spend with Jesus? And what happened if we used it in a case of emergency? Or what happened if we spent an hour or more using it each day? What would happen? Well, what would happen is we would experience God's blessing. We would experience his grace. And I want to invite you as we conclude today, not to conclude in a prayer, but to conclude in song. This is one that I use in my life. It's a Robin Mark song. To focus on, um, on Jesus when I need to be undistracted and more focused. So I want to invite you to stand and just sing with me. I'm going to sing through a little bit of a little part uh, of first. And, and, and then we'll sing it together. It's our prayer today. All for Jesus, all I am and have and ever hope to be. Jesus, all for Jesus, all I am and have and ever hope to be. 
first verse again. So let's do that. Jesus.
And let us pray. Lord Jesus, as I keep my eyes focused on you with my brothers and sisters in Christ, I worship you with my tithes and offerings. Use them to lead other hearts to eyes to focus on you and the life you alone give. Amen. We'd like to bless the uh, quilts that are going uh, through World, Lutheran World Relief to other places and also to our veterans' home. We'd like to do it with this prayer. It's uh, going to be a little bit responsive. Your part is on the screen. I invite you to follow it there. And if you're able to see it, to uh, join together in, in lifting these uh, quotes up to God for blessing. Let's pray. O oh Lord our God, maker of all things, you've blessed us with so many gifts, a good eye for color, the ability to make fine stitches, and the skills to develop ever new patterns. Today, we offer these fruits of this labor, the quilts that have been made, to you. We dedicate these quilts to your service. May your love go with each quilt, blessing those who receive them. Let these expressions of love radiate your love from us to the world. Warm the bodies of many by their use, and the hearts of many as they receive these fruits of our love in your name. Lord, all we possess comes from your loving hand. Give us grace to honor you with all our being. Draw our hearts to you, guide our minds, and control our wills, so that we may be wholly, completely yours. Use us as you will, always to your glory, in the welfare of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord Jesus, who ran the race for us, give strength and healing to the body, souls, and spirits of all whose race has been burdened physically, emotionally, or spiritually. Bring healing, wholeness, and strength, especially to Gail, Connie, Fred, Walter, President of Melania Trump, along with all who are suffering with the coronavirus, and those that we name before you in our hearts. Be ever present with our shut-ins, wrapping them in the love of our faith family. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. The Lord Jesus, who ran the race for us, we give thanks with Josh and Jen Comfort for the blessings you gave uh, to his family through Josh's grandfather, Sheldon, who has now finished his race and come home to your presence. Give resurrection, comfort, and peace to their family and the families of all who grieve loved ones who have finished their race in faith. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And Lord Jesus, who ran the race for us, who leads husbands and wives into an enduring sacrificial love like your own, we give thanks with Karen and Fred Tang for 64 years of marriage. Strengthen the commitment and enhance the joy of every husband and wife in a love like your own. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And Lord Jesus, who ran the race for us, give endurance to our medical personnel, uh, police officers, firefighters, and first responders as they serve for us, re uh, reflecting your joy in their sacrificial service. Extend your protection over the residents and firefighters in the areas that continue to be threatened by fire, and give protection and endurance to our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines, especially Chrissy, Ryan, Julia, David, Benjamin, and Christian. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Lord Jesus, who ran the race for us, may our love for each other point those among whom we live in our Glenmac River, Fox Bay Shore, Brown Milwaukee community to see our focus on you and your love in us. Strengthen those uh, who have been called to confess your name in local missions among the Hmong ministries, the Spanish-speaking, deaf, and immigrant populations, Grace with faithfulness um, their witness as they share your life uh, here and around the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Lord Jesus, who ran the race for us, by your spirit, remove the distractions and center the focus of our households on you, giving strength for our journey. Thankful for your grace, mercy, and salvation, along with Kurt Holtrin. We are also thankful for safety and employment. Continue to watch over and bless our friends and family and your children, especially those undergoing persecution here and around the world. We join Dick Hines, Gail Henneman, Kira Quentin, and Braylon Griffin, and Tim, Jamie, and Lydia, and William joined uh, as we daily focus our lives on you as we run our race. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, remember us now in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We go encouraged to keep 
keep our focus on our Jesus in these words. A new command, Jesus says, I give to you. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. I love you. Now rooted and established in love, may you have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long, high and deep, is the love of Christ. To know and share this love that surpasses knowledge, filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. May down the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be and remain with you all. Amen. Amen.